Good morning, everyone. Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service of Parish Communion this morning. A especially warm welcome to all the people that are coming back. They've been back, they've started back at school and they're coming now with, though we've been running children's things throughout the summer, we're trying to do a big launch for Sunday school. We've got a new, lots of things going on in Sunday school this morning. And then, of course, we've got Hogwarts Church, of which more later on next Sunday afternoon. So to, this is really a new start. It's a new start for lots of people in lots of different ways. Obviously, all the schools have opened up, all sorts of other things are opening up. Uh, my daughter tells me that even in Preston, which is, in, as you will know, in local lockdown, they're opening up all sorts of new things on, again on Tuesday. Though you can't yet cuddle your grandchildren there, but never mind. Um, so this is about a new start. You'll see from your pew sheet, today's service is called A New Start. And we're looking at God, Moses and the burning bush. We're looking at it in church and we're going to look at it in Sunday school as well. So I think most of you will perhaps know the story of Moses and the burning bush. I hope you're going to learn a bit more about it as we go along. So let me just read to you the verse which comes um, from uh, the... What, what I've got on top of your pew sheet. God called to him, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. And God said, so now go. So we're thinking about Moses' new starts and our new start. And we're going to begin by, with our first hymn, which is Sing Hosanna. Now, I have to say, sadly, we are still not yet as a congregation allowed to sing, but the choir wonderfully are allowed to sing. So one of the things that have just occurred to me, the more people we have in the choir, the better, because the choir are allowed to sing. So if there are any grown-ups or older people who like singing, you could go and sit in the choir for a bit, socially distanced, of course, and you're allowed to sing up there. So we, I need to send that message around because it hasn't quite occurred to me to say it yet in that way. So the choir will sing. The rest of you can't, but you can say it in your heads, or you might like to mouth the words and pretend you're singing. And certainly think about all the things you've got to thank God and praise God for. You all know the song, it's Sing Hosanna. So let's stand together and sing. And those that can sing.
please, will you sit down? And if you like to look at the screen, you'll see there's uh, some things that we're going to say together, if you can join in the words in bold type. The Lord be with you. And then we're going to say this prayer together. Let's go. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, Liz, did we say that it was the dedication of Sunday school teachers next? Oh, right, forgotten, sorry. So it was this prayer and then this prayer. Oh, right, thank you. We're next going to say the prayer of the day, which is on your pew sheets, also on the screen. Thank you, let's say that. Almighty God, you search us and know us. May we rely on you in strength and rest on you in weakness, now and in all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as I said, we're sort of relaunching or starting our Sunday school in quite a big way today. So I've invited all those people um, who help out either in Sunday school or in family church. And if there's anybody here I haven't spoken to, I've forgotten, please could you um, come out the front with the others? I've got some. We're just going to pray for you all. There's lots of exciting things coming on. So this is Liz first who's doing the project, who's coming down, who's our young people's minister, so and looking after the children's work and the, um, and the young people's work. Um, so we've got the, the two big things, of course, are Sunday school and also family church, and the next one of those is Hogwarts Church next Sunday. So we're going to pray for all those who are actually involved in that, um, and just, so that, just to make sure that people who are here know who they are. We'll have to think of a way of making sure the other congregations know that so they can pray for you um, as well. So if I could ask those people who... Part of it could come out the front. This is on her way down, having instructed the <laughs> projectionist. So you've come out the front, and so and that's the bomb there as well. That's lovely. Thank you. In order to do children's, it, it, we, we need lots of people, as you can see. We actually need more people because ideally we only want anybody to do things once a month, apart from this, we'll do it a bit more often. So, uh, <laughs> so. And we've also got older children we want to prepare for communion. There's lots of things going on here. This is Lily. Um, it, I think I'm just, because not, I, one of the things about this church is we've got so many people doing so many different things. People don't know everybody else. You won't remember them, I know. I'm just going to ask everybody to say their name, because that at least is a step in the right direction. So actually, if, you, if Liz, you start, and, and if people, then we go around this way and just say your name so you people know who they're playing for. Mandy, Eva, Jenna, Joe, Amanda, Lindsay, Lily. Thank you very much. And there, there, and there are others that are helping out and will help out as well to pray for. But we're going to start off with these people here. We've got a little, um, little, a short, a very, very, very short little service for them to join in, so that you can pray for them and all the things that we're, we are doing. And it's very nice for the children to pray for their teachers and leaders and helpers as well. So. Um, it's on the screen. We thank God for all the children and young people of our church and those who he has called to serve him as teachers and helpers. So I'm asking everybody here, do you believe that God has called you to be teachers and helpers in the children's work of St. Michael's? We do. We thank God for all his gifts and the responsibilities of our calling. So do you determine by his strength to prepare yourselves well and bring to those you teach a fuller of teach or help with a fuller and clearer knowledge of his love and the blessing of his wisdom for their lives. We do. Will you be faithful in prayer and pastoral care for all the children and young people? We will. This is our result. Will you now dedicate yourselves to serve God as teachers and helpers here? We will. This is our result. And I'm going to ask them to pray the prayer which is on the screen. Um, but actually, can we go to the next screen? Can we do that? Can we keep, go keep going on the next one? 
One more. Right. Okay, but actually, I think because it, this affects more or less everybody in church, I think we might all pray this prayer together, if that's all right. People here especially, but actually, this applies to everybody. Let's say it together. Father, we dedicate ourselves to serve you faithfully, follow Christ, seeking his special purpose for our lives. Send us out now to work and to witness freely, gratefully and in hope, in the power of the Holy Spirit and for the honour and glory of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you in all the work you do amongst our children and young people. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much indeed. Would you like to go back to where you were now? And we've, we've got our children's song no, reading. reading next. Okay. So Lily's going to do the Bible reading next. We've got our Bible reading is in two parts. Um, you'll see it's the story of Moses and the burning bush. Lily's reading the first part to us now. Then we're having a children's song, and then we'll have the second part later. So if Lily could do the first part of the Bible reading. There should be a pew sheet somewhere for someone to give to Emma, who needs it. <laughs> Can someone give Emma? We've got a size per Do we have a size person? Give Emma. A there should be one down there in front of you. Have you got one? Right, so... What we're doing now is this is the story of this. We're, this is the first of four so, uh, sermons about and talks and things thinking about Moses. Actually, we did Moses' birth. Do any of the children know what was the special story about Moses when he was a baby? We sometimes talk about Moses and the. Anybody know the story? We talked about it on Mother's Day, with, except that we weren't allowed to open it. Moses and the bulrushes. Do you remember Moses was the baby that was saved in the river and the princess rescued her? Well, this is basically the next, story, most, next important part of the story of Moses and Moses and the burning bush. Lily, thank you. Now Moses was tending to the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within the bush. Moses saw that, Though the bush was on fire, it did not burn. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses said, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Thank you very much indeed, Lily. Um, now we're going to sing a children's song before the children go out to our tent. Um, there's a nice picture set, aren't they? Good. Um, so if you'd like to stand, we're going to sing Our God is a Great Big God. Now these have got actions, this song. I think everybody should know this song. We've sung it often in the past. So I would like some people, I know people know the actions. Actually, I know the actions here, but I would like some help for people to come and do the actions with me. Is there anybody who's brave enough to come and help me with the actions? Are we having the words for our God is a great big God? No, I need, I, I, I like, have I got, is there anybody I can persuade to come and help me with our God is, our God is a great big God. Anybody know that who can come and help? Or when you get, right, brilliant, do you want to stand there? You're going to come out, excellent. I've got, anybody else coming to, coming to support here? Right, well you and I can do it together. Should we do it together? Shall we do it together? Our God, I'd like anybody else who would like to come and join us. Are you ready? Our God is a great big God. Ready? Anybody else coming out as well? Our God okay, we're there. is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And He holds us in His hand. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And He holds us in His hands. He is high.
applause for Arnie and Audrey here, don't you think? Well done, you too. Thank you very much for my help. Now the children are all going out with Liz uh, to our tent, and everybody else can take a seat. And we're going to have our second Bible reading when everybody's gone out. I should have said earlier, we, if you're actually reading or doing prayers or taking service, you don't need to wear a mask. In fact, you're told not to wear a mask in case anyone was reading, but I hadn't told Lily that, my fault. Um, if you're obviously not doing that, then you are supposed to wear a mask. So that's what the rules are at the moment. No doubt they'll change next week, as they're changing all the time, but that's where we are at the moment. So Emma, you're allowed to take your mask off when you read. <laughs> So if you like to take your pew sheet and you might like to follow the next bit of the story which Emma is going to read to us. And the second reading is from Exodus chapter 13, uh, chapter 3, sorry, verses... Um, 7 to 15. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever the name you shall call me from generation to generation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Emma. It's good to have an English teacher reading all those lists of names. Not many people would have been prepared to do that, so thank you. Um, very grateful. Let's pray as we sit. Holy God, we pray that you will teach us from your word today how to respond to your call. Amen. A minister friend of ours was outside his church one Sunday morning welcoming people. It was a very popular church, full of young people, young families and students, as well as older people. That's not a very common sight today, to actually see people flocking to church on a Sunday, which was what was happening here. Intrigued, an elderly man walking past came over to speak to the minister, our friend, and, said to, and asked what was going on. And the, our friend says, well, they're coming to church. They're coming to worship God and hear his word. And so our friend said, well, why don't you come in and see for yourself? And he said, the man said, the elderly man said, I'm much too old. I'm 80. 
And so our friend said, that's amazing. What a coincidence. I am speaking today about a man for whom life began at 80. I'm speaking about Moses. He was 80 when he's got God's call. It is never too late. Never too late. Moses' encounter with God at 80 was a whole new start. And we could have called this sermon the old Moses and the new Moses. This famous Bible passage today on Mount, of Moses on Mount Horeb tells the story of Moses' moment of conversion, of turning to God. Some of you will know C.S. Lewis, who wrote the Narnia books. He describes himself as the most reluctant convert in Christendom. But actually, he was certainly no more reluctant convert than Moses, who had all sorts of excuses, as we'll see. But what we have here in our passage is a radical and life-changing experience which Moses had, which any true conversion is. Now, God's preparation for a call um, can often be a very long process. It certainly was with Moses. But when our eyes are finally opened and we accept God's call, there is a fundamental change of heart and focus, as we see here with Moses. For Moses, who became one of the greatest, the great, a great or even greatest leaders of God's people, it all started here at the burning bush. So here we are on Mount Horeb, a very long way from Egypt, from which Moses had fled 40 years ago. I imagine most of you will know the story. He'd killed uh, an Egyptian guard in Egypt. Remember, he'd been brought up in the palace after the bulrushes. And he killed the guard for maltreating the Israelites. And I do hope you've remembered that part of the story. God has been preparing Moses for the task of rescuing his people from slavery now for 40 years. And if we just think back about his 80 years, for the first 40 years of Moses' life, he'd been at the top of the tree in uh, Egypt. For the last 40 years, he'd been at the bottom. For the first 40 years, he was brought up in a palace in Egypt, given the best of everything, the best food, the best clothes, and so on. But for the last 40 years, Moses had been at the bottom of the pile. He'd been a shepherd, was a shepherd, the lowest of the low, living in a tent on the hills by himself. But all this time, God has been preparing him for his great task. There is no ageism or retirement with God. You will remember Paul spent a long time in in Arabia preparing for his ministry, Jesus, of course, was 18 years a carpenter before he began preaching. God is not ageist, and that's obviously in reverse as well. He calls people in his own time. He can call very young people. I think I've showed you this picture before. I'll probably show it again. But this is a picture of uh, um, the Annunciation. It's the archangel calling Mary. She's there in school uniform. It was given to, picture given to my old school because Mary was only 13 or 14 when God called her to bear his son. God is not ageist, young or old. He calls us where we are to follow him. And today we are in a new start situation in lots of ways. The new school term makes everything feel different as schools go back and universities go back and obviously all the worries that that brings as well. We're in, we're told the new normal, though the (laughs) Times tells us this week we're not supposed to use that word because it's boring, bourgeois. Anyway, God is calling each one of us, um, young and old, to serve him in different and new ways in our new post-lockdown society. So who is this God? This was the question that Moses wanted to know the answer to when he saw the bush burning in the desert. It was probably an acacia bush, a thorn bush, burning, but it was not consumed. The book of Exodus, as in our reading, describes Moses' encounter with God as the angel of the Lord appearing to him. This is none other than God himself. And there is a close link in the Bible between fire and holiness. 
we're going to be singing, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. There's something obviously hugely awesome about the presence of our almighty God who is with us now. The word holiness means separation. And when it's used of God, the emphasis is on pure goodness, the pure goodness of God, which is miles apart from the dirt of sin, our sin. Fire is a biblical symbol of pure holiness. It's dangerous, it's powerful. Think of the Pentecost fire which came down on the disciples. But here, this powerful, awesome, holy God simply asks Moses to take off his shoes, a lesson in obedience. And it's here now that Moses learns what his life mission was to be, to bring God's people out of Egypt in that great rescue operation we call the Exodus. But then, if you follow the story, you see all of his Moses's insecurities and excuse. He's chronically insecure. We see his, first of all, his sense of personal inadequacy. What me, he says. But do notice God's response, as lesson to us all here. Uh, God didn't try to deny that Moses was inadequate by himself. That was true. God said, that's right, you are not up to it. But he then says, but I am. God didn't say to Moses, of course you can do it. Nor did he say, it doesn't matter. God accepts Moses' inadequacy, but he then stresses that actually he, God, can do it. Or put it another way, Moses says, look, I'm not up to this job. You shouldn't have picked me. God says, of course you're not up to it. I knew that when I chose you. But the point is not your ability, but mine. Now, actually, it's good to say that you're inadequate about a task you're asked to do if it turns you to God. But it's wrong if you turn down what God has been asking you to do. It becomes a false modesty. Excessive self-deprecation is pride in reverse. There's one sort of pride, which is scrambling for the front seat, which we all know is wrong, but it's equally wrong to scramble for the back seat to say, no, no, not me. There's a little rhyme that I heard, which I think is quite enlightening on this. Let's see if you like it too. It goes, once in a saintly passion, I cried in, with desperate grief. O Lord, my heart is black with guile. Of sinners I am chief. Then stoops my guardian angel and whispered from behind, Vanity, my little man, you're nothing of the kind. We can have an inverse pride about things. Yes, we, like Moses, are inadequate, all of us. Actually, that's the condition when it comes to Christian service. We need to know that we can't do it by ourselves. But God is not uh, inadequate. He is there walking side by side, protecting us and guiding us. And then he comes, and then Moses says his next excuse, I wouldn't know what to say, he says. His lack of knowledge. Now that's quite often people say, well, I couldn't possibly do that. I can't teach in Sunday school, don't know the Bible well enough. Um, well, actually, nobody knows the Bible well enough, but that's why we obviously we're all learning together. That's why sermons and Bible studies and things are, uh, are so important. We're all in a learning process here. What Moses particularly wants to know, of course, here is what about who was this God who was speaking to him? And he asks first, it starts with his name. He says to God, what shall I say to the Israelites if they ask, what is the name of the God of your fathers, the one who sent you to take us out of here? And God's reply was, I am who I am. I am has sent me to you. Now, the name of God is subject to countless books and discussions. There's a sci-fi story which I read when I was a teenager called the, by Arthur C. Clarke, it's called the Nine Billion Names of God. It's a, it's a sort of a topic. But God is clear. God here says, I am is my name. 
usually is pronounced Yahweh in Hebrew. Now, the name of God is infinitely precious and awesome. Later, Jews, and indeed very often now, refused to say the name of God or write it. What they did say was Adonai, which means Lord. And actually, when we say Yahweh, that's a combination of the consonants which are printed in Hebrew where there aren't the vowels and the word Adonai. Leaving that aside, what was the most important thing about this name, I am, is, is what it conveys. It comes from the Hebrew verb to be, and the key idea behind it is that God is alive. He is living and active. Our God is at work in the world then and now. Moses' God, our God, is at work today, and he is personal He's not an it like the pagan gods, and he is unique. All of those things are encompassed in the name I am. But for us now this morning, he is calling each one of us to follow him as he called Moses. However old or young you are, God is calling you to follow him. And God has a job or jobs for you to do. You all have roles at home and many of you at work, all of those are roles, but he may well be asking you to be serving in ways as, different ways as well. We've just been obviously commissioning all those helping with our, or some of those helping with our children and youth work. And the first thing to, really to take to this is God does want you to work in this way, and undoubtedly you are not up to the task. None of us is. But he is. He is. He says, I am. In fact, one lovely way you can actually use God's name here is to do what many of the Jews did, to add a characteristic of God, which comes from his word, to his name. So whatever you need, God can supply it. God is living and active. We know God is peace. His name is I am peace. We know God is comfort. His name is I am comfort. We know he is love. His name is I am love. God can supply all your needs. He, has, he is adequate to the task he's given you. We are on the cusp of a new normal here, new challenges, new tasks at home, in work, in society, in church. What is God calling you to do? Go, he says to Moses. Go, he says to us. In church life, we urgently need new people to help us in the task of running the church, in Sunday school, in the the church council. We want to be out here serving the community. Please pray today and beyond about what God wants you to do. He will equip you for the task. Ask him what he wants you to do. As we sit, let us pray together. Lord God, we pray that you will show each of us today what you want us to do. Help us to trust you, to give us what we need to fulfil the roles you have for us. Amen. We're going now to continue in prayer with our prayers of intercession, which Margaret is going to lead to us, lead us in. And hopefully she's hearing all this outside the door, I think. Yes, here she is. Thank you. We bow our heads and keep silence so that if the Lord calls, we may hear his voice and be ready to respond. Dear Lord, We give continued thanks for the safe and rested return of Anne and Peter and for the ministry of Richard and Liz who helped us out during their absence. We pray for our imminent PCC meeting where we're considering all the lessons that have been learnt during lockdown to celebrate our successes and to benefit from our failures so that we as a parish may better serve you, our Lord and Master. We continue to pray for new church wardens to come forward to assist and take over from Jock in this very important task. We pray for our new Bible study series on the Ten Commandments, which is starting on Tuesday, 
and look forward to welcoming all those who wish to attend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our school children and our teachers who have just started back to school after so many months away. We pray for all the organisers who have had to put so many new schemes in place to try to keep the children safe. We pray that the future for all of them will be healthy and educationally exciting. We also pray for parents returning to work after so long a time at home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country, still torn about by coronavirus and economic recession. We pray for our world, facing so many difficulties, drought, flooding, war, desolation and corruption. Help us individually to stand up and show to all world leaders that the only way forward is to follow the basic teachings of Jesus by loving and caring and putting the needs of others before our own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those we know who are lonely, sick, isolated, fearful, who feel they have no one to turn to or to care for and support them. Help us to be their voices. From our own parish, we pray for Michael Harrison, Jane Slinger, Beryl Cotton, Mona Lewis and baby Schultz. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the lives of all those we have loved and lost, for all those whose birthdays and anniversaries fall at this time and who are not here for us to share the moment, for all those who have guided and protected us. We pray for all those who still remember and mourn and ask you to give them your comfort and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Again, we ask that you take us and use us for your service in whatever way you need. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please turn to the top of page seven in your service booklet. Hmm? We haven't got that. Or you can look at the screen to see or hear the words of comfort that our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And then, as a congregation, we confess together our sins in penitence and in faith, as we join together saying, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please would you stand for the peace. We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So you might like to uh, just turn and uh, wave to one another to wish them the peace. Um, wave to the choir at the top and uh, congregation at the bottom.
about to sing. Hmm? Oh, that would be kind, would you? Thank you. Just, I mean, basically when they're ready, but if they know we're, we're, at, the, we're, we're, we're at the piece. So we're, we're going to sing, or the choir are going to sing, and we're going... I've been trying to mouth the words. I think that's because it makes you feel you're singing, even if you're not. It's really worth... And you, it's easier to concentrate. I, let me recommend that, but obviously your, your choice. We're going to, uh, to sing, or the choir are, number six... Well, it's not six, it's seven. We're still for the presence of the Lord. But it's, it's obviously you can see how much it's... Uh, based round the burning bush incident about God being here and bowing before us. And we stand on holy ground. Think of all the links with the, with the reading and our response to the Holy One. Thank you, Phil. Children will no doubt join us soon. Um, we are, as I go to the table, we're going to sing the doc, though we haven't taken up a collection, which we're not allowed to do now, but there will be um, the tray at the end. So the encouragement, obviously, because the church needs to pay all its bills to still continue to give. So you might not be thinking about what, what, how you give. So, so have this, we'll sing this doxology, which goes with the offertory now at this point as we come to communion. So praise God from whom all blessings flow. Choir, thank you. Please take a seat as we come to the great thanksgiving prayer of the church, which hopefully is on the screen. Uh, it's page 14 if you have got uh, a book and you want to follow it there. If I could just explain when it comes to communion, um, the way that I'm required to give communion is we only give the bread at the moment. And I say the words before anybody comes up and you'll be invited to come up on the left-hand side, your left, my right, of, of the aisle, I will be standing there and I'll simply put the um, bread in your hands without saying anything and I'll have a mask on at that point 
um, just to, to reassure you basically that we're all doing it properly. Um, for children, it would be lovely to continue to do a blessing, so I think I will just do that, though I won't actually touch their head, then they can just come forward and I'll put my hand over it and say a sentence of blessing. So hopefully we'll be able to do all of that bit as you are used to as well, very much a sort of a welcoming way, part of doing that. And, and as we remember together Jesus' death on the cross. So do come in, everybody. We haven't quite started our uh, uh, prayer, so this is absolutely perfect timing. And we look forward to hearing from you about how you've been burning bushes or not quite maybe doing that. <laughs> Um, at the end of the service when everybody's coming back. So we'll just wait for everybody to come back. You might like to be thinking of the words on, which hopefully are on the screen about as we're thinking about the Last Supper and Jesus telling us to take bread and wine to remember his death for us on the cross. And this is the, prayer, the great prayer of the church which everybody joins into. Welcome back everybody. We we'll look forward to hearing about what you've been getting up to in a moment. So the words I hope are on the screen. Please join in the words in bold type. Are we ready? It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you didn't reject us, you but came to meet us in your Son. And together... You embraced us as your children. Have we got it on the screen? Oh, we haven't got it on the screen. Uh, I think, Liz, we, may, we, have, we have got it on the screen. Can you join in the words in bold, bold up? You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, Taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Join together now in the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. 
So come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you have all faith, but because you have some faith and would like to grow in it. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because he loves you and wants to give you everything. Come because all is ready and we are his body. And the words of administration went for when you come up. Eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and be thankful. We come now to the prayer after communion, which is on the board. Yes. Yes. Let's join in this prayer together, saying, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so, Liz, I think we'd love to hear what the children have been doing. Would you like to come and tell us? Excellent. Thank you. (laughs) So we have been thinking about Moses and the burning bush as well, like you have in here. Um, And we've been thinking about, we've been focusing on the fact that God called Moses by his name and said, Moses, Moses, follow me. And we talked about what Moses had to go and do. Um, And we talked about how God knows all of us by our name. He knows how many hairs we have on our head, which slightly baffled the children. Well, they don't know that, so how does God know? But God does. Um, And so we've talked about that kind of thing. It was very busy in Sunday school, I have to say, today. It was lovely. It was very busy. Um, and we've made our own burning bush, so we've got, uh, what you can't see because we've burnt it, is that the writing says, God called Moses by his name, and then each of the children has written their name on a flame, um, so that God has called us by our names as well. And they've made, if you could just hold up what you've made, their own tiny little burning bush, um, which some of them have written on the back of God knows my name, God called Moses by name, that kind of thing, just to remind them. And they've got their own tiny, teeny little burning bushes um, to remember the story and to remember that God's called them by their names as well. Thank you very much indeed. That is brilliant. Thank you. So we're looking forward to seeing all the children back next Sunday afternoon. There's no Sunday school. There normally is Sunday school every Sunday morning, but not next Sunday because tomorrow afternoon, sorry, next Sunday afternoon, is Hogwarts Church. I have my Hermione Granger costume already, complete with my wig, which I hope I might be able to get into and put in as I go into school this week. Um, Somebody this morning has offered to make a broomstick. We're waiting to see if that materialises. That's quite exciting. But we're going to turn the church into Hogwarts Church. We've got some big, the big, all the different house crests. Anybody here know the name of the the houses in Hogwarts. Who knows that? Okay, Grace, tell us. Oh, Duke can tell us two, and Owen can tell. Uh, Morgan can tell us the other two. Can you shout out? So Gryffindor and sorry, and Ravenclaw, and the other two. Morgan, thank you. Thank you. And they've all got their own mottos. I know that because you can find that. So it's all very exciting. So we're going to turn the church around. Uh, we're going to. I think we're going to put bricks, aren't we, Emily? And, on the front of the church door so you can come in through platform nine and three quarters if you know your Harry Potter. So we've got lots of superb ideas where people are working out quiz. We have our quiz master down here, Penny. Happy to see you. So, can you, so the crucial thing is to you want to take some spare, spare flyers, make sure that all the families and children you know, let's hope we can get everybody in legally. So we can actually, what's the nice thing is we've got people outside today, you might not realise that, we can actually uh, the service can be outside now and everybody can hear properly. And we've also got our tents, so at least we've got facilities of spreading out if we need to. So that should be very exciting next Sunday. And the other thing is to say, as we prayed in church, we are starting our Bible study growth groups this week. On Tuesday evening, there's the first of the series. We're going to look through the Ten Commandments. You don't have to come to all ten. They'll be spaced out over a long time. It's once a fortnight and you come dip in, but do not covet. We're starting backwards is the first one. Lots of things to think about how we often want other people's things. 
Um, so we're going to do that. It's going to be by Zoom initially, but also we hope we can run also a small live group. Or if there are lots of people who don't want to Zoom or can't Zoom, we'll do it in real life and we could do it in church. So can I ask you to think seriously about whether you can do it? So there's this Tuesday and then the following Monday is the same thing. But if you could tell me whether you think you probably would try and at least like to come to one of or two of them and whether you could do Zoom or you want to come in real life. Because whereas Zoom is not problematic, except I need to send you the link. Um, obviously, the real life, I have to make sure everybody's socially distanced and we've got a venue, which is why we could easily do it in church and have Compton as well if we wanted to. So I really would like you to think seriously about whether you could come to at least some of those and you can see the link with the Ten Commandments and Moses. So as you leave... If you think you might come to one or two, if you could let me know what sort of, whether you want a Zoom version or a real life version. And just the other thing, it's all on your pew sheet, please take it with you, is that we were hoping to have a harvest quiz. We have Will Sutton lined up to do that. But having talked to Will again this week, as well as finding out all the things, we decided, and he said he'd be more comfortable with actually postponing it and making it a New Year quiz instead. Um, and the other real good reason for doing that is that we hope, Stan, can you confirm that we think that, that the new village hall should be ready. We don't know for certain. We hope it's going to be ready, which will be bigger. Although we could use the school if we wanted to. Oh, hang on, I've got, yes, new village hall by January, January end of January. Yes. So, sorry, we have, sorry to have Alan here, who's, who's the current, she has, no, he hasn't may started yet, anyway, he was a chair, is the chair of the parish council, so I thought I'd forgotten you were sitting there at the moment. So, another reason for postponing it to January, so you can delete the date in your diary at the moment, but if you could try and make sure the 22nd of January is there as a fixed thing, and I need to write and ask that officially, that would be great. I think those are all the urgent notices we need for today, so we're going to have our final hymn. They do try mouthing these words if you're not doing that. I, the Lord of sea and sky, and that's a brilliant hymn about here am I sending me. It's our response to God's call to us. So please stand uh, to sing in some form, I, the Lord of sea and sky.
So may the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you to serve him. And may the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.